Welcome to Biostock Studio. Today we have Magle Group and their CEO, Justin Pierce. Welcome. And with you is Helena Osmer Tedius, Chief uh, Marketing and Innovation Officer. Welcome. Thank Great, you. Thanks. So, Justin, could you start off with telling us about Mogul Group and your two main focus areas, please? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have two parts to the business. The one part is a CDMO, a uh, traditional offering of contract development and manufacturing services, uh, which we do for a variety of companies from small biotech, small pharma, all the way up. Uh, and then the second part, which is what we're here to discuss today, is the DSM, the degradable starch microspheres, uh, which is a medical technology that we use and engineer and innovate on. So that's the, the two parts to the business. Yeah. Helena, you'll have to help us out for us who does not you know, exactly know what DSM, these degradable starch microspheres are. Please uh, give it to us in layman terms. Okay. Uh, I will certainly try to. So DSM is a very broad technology platform that can be used in various uh, medical fields. It stands for degradable starch microspheres, uh, which is a, a very natural sphere or particle that are sourced from potato starch. So it's biocompatible. Uh, it also degrades in the body. And um, the DSM can come in different forms depending on the medical need. So we can use it as a gel, as a suspension or as a, a powder. Um, and we can also uh, define, depending on the need, define the size of the particle, the degradation time and so forth. So make it really optical for that specific medical need. Okay, thank you. I think I understand that. It sounds very interesting. But how can this technology be of use, Justin? Uh, I think it's, it's our biggest problem. It, it has a very wide application of use. Um, so we've got to be quite strategic in terms of where we go. Uh, the DSM can, as Helene has alluded to, can be formed in different ways. So we can make gels, we can make um, beads that can be put directly into the bloodstream to deliver a drug. We can combine it with you know, AT&P therapies, we can combine it with traditional drug therapies, uh, or we could use it on its own as we do with uh, some of the hemostatic devices that we've developed around it. So it has a lot of versatility mm. on it. Yeah, okay, so then uh, the next question is, of course, what medical areas are you focusing on? So we, today we have chosen three strategic areas. Uh, one part is within the oncology field or embolization, where we use, um, it's basically targeted drug delivery, you can say, where we use the DSM uh, to stop, to embolize, to basically stop or block the blood flow temporarily. Uh, we use that for inoperable liver and lung tumors, so you stop the blood flow uh, to the tumor and then are able to deliver the chemotherapeutic drug directly uh, locally. So it's basically targeted delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, other areas that we have is within the surgical field where we have a product called Smart Pan. Uh, it's actually within pancreatic surgery. Um, pancreatic surgeries are quite often complicated surgeries uh, with also high complication, post-operative complication rates. Uh, and with SmartPan we can uh, detect or indicate a leakage from the pancreas during surgery and by then uh, the product is then designed to be able to minimize post-operative complications. Mm. In the surgical field we also have uh, an out-license agreement for DSM with Beckton Dickinson. We will also have a product for hemostasis to, to stop bleeding during surgery. Uh, and then the third uh, field is within uh, advanced wound care to treat chronic wounds uh, to reduce the bacteria amount and, and aim to minimize uh, infections and also deliver moisture to um, heal the wound in a better way. Mm -hmm, thank you. So Justin, like you said, you can use this in so many areas. How come you, you took these three and why is it important, you think, to, to get a clear focus instead of a broader approach? I think uh, strategy is the key to success. Um, you know, we don't like taking a shotgun approach to development. Uh, we, we like to have a very clear idea of what we're developing, what the market looks like, and most importantly, what the patient needs with, within that market. Um, looking at the products that we developed, uh, like Embercept S for embolization, this was a lot of discussion with the physicians. What do you need? How would you like the product to be developed? What does the patient need and what will you know, benefit the patient outcome? Uh, likewise, in SmartPan, you know, we use an innovation from the outside in model, which is we like to hear from the surgeons, what do they need? 
and then we can bring it back to the development team and see what we can do and bring it back to the surgeons and say, is this what you were looking for? Uh, and that requires focus. Uh, so I think the, the strategy and the strategic areas really help narrow the mind a little bit, uh, give us good investment in terms of making sure we get the best investment out uh, for return, uh, and also making sure we get product to patient in the end. Yeah. yeah. Helena, since we're talking about business, what does your business model look like? So we have chosen different business models depending on the uh, medical need uh, or the medical area, I would say. Uh, we have license agreements, but we also sell our DSM portfolio directly. Uh, and there we also invest uh, in medical support and education directly to the field. Uh, we also have partnerships with distributors uh, in uh, various areas uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Nationally, uh, internationally, would you say? So we work uh, internationally, I would say. Uh, EU may be the, the main market for us, but we're also uh, looking in other parts of the world, both Asia, Americas and, and the US. Mm. Comes another quite general question for you, but where do you stand today business-wise? So business-wise today, it's uh, for us it's a commercialization journey, taking the DSM concept and technology uh, to, the, to the patients. Uh, and for that, we need to align our business strategy with the clinical evidence, uh, the regulatory and the registrations approval to be able to, to introduce the products to the market. Uh, and that's uh, basically where we are today on, on a way to deliver that true uh, value to patients uh, in need. Mm -hmm. Justin, this very flexible technology of yours, can you um, combine it with others? And would you like to? Yeah, we, we, we have uh, a number of partnerships running. I mean, recently we entered into a partnership with a U.S. company uh, who has a very interesting iodine complex. Um, and we can see that the tying of the iodine with the starch <clears throat> brings us a you know, really new and novel uh, wound care product uh, potential. Um, and with the recent acquisition on PKC, they have a Dextran technology, uh, again, a biocompatible polymer similar to the DSM, uh, has a different degradation profile. So we're looking at how can we combine those technologies uh, to make more innovative products in, in the future. So it, it absolutely has the ability to be enhanced, if we, if we use that term, with, with other technologies. Um, and we, we have a number of partnerships with other companies where, where they have something interesting where we think the combination could make a real impact in the, uh, you know, in the healthcare field. Mm. And so this is, a, if I understand you correctly, quite determined uh, strategy of yours, also to, to make uh, more partnerships and in the combination of your product with others. We, I mean, the, the focus for us is about benefit to patient. <clears throat> and if we can see a combination of technologies will give us that benefit mm. um, and allow us to put a really innovative product in the market that'll make that difference then we feel it's, it's almost a moral and ethical obligation for us to enter into those sort of partnerships to be able to get that product out in the end. So yeah, we're absolutely open to those partnerships. Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, I would like to stay because you say the, the ethical responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, is it at the core of what you do, the patient? And, and so which patients are we talking about? Which patients would you like to help? Well, I mean, you know, our aspiration is to bring innovative healthcare products to patients in need. Um, we know that we, we are quite a small company, so we're not going to deal with every patient in need. Um, so we look very much at the strategic areas that Helena outlined and where do we see the biggest patient need in those areas. And that tends to be where we try to focus our attention um, so that we can make the maximum impact to those patients in our strategic areas. Yeah. Going back to business, where will uh, Mogler Group be in a year from now? Uh, when it comes to the DSM business, uh, we do see a growing interest and demand for the DSM uh, technologies in different medical fields, and that we will continue to deliver on. Uh, we've also heavily invested in uh, DSM investment uh, and in the development area, uh, which is a true need for us to be able to deliver to patients. Uh, in a larger perspective, uh, I believe that Magli Group will continue executing on, on the strategy that we have, the, uh, all the um, initiatives uh, to make sure that we realize those during the year. Uh, Justin also mentioned PK chemicals and making sure that they are well integrated in the larger group. Uh, Magli Group is a strong group. 
uh, where we can continue building on operational efficiencies and really leveraging on the technologies that we have in the group. Mm -hmm. Justin, you'll get the pleasure of taking this even further if we talk about long term, mm -hmm. the vision, maybe even end game. What is the direction you see? I think we, we've always had an approach in the company that we, <clears throat> we want to grow and we want to grow steadily. Uh, we want to grow sustainably and responsibly. Uh, and I think that, that brings us to the, the long-term goal. That, you know, that's where we want to be. Uh, so what do we want to be in five years, and 10 years? We want to be a grown-up company uh, generating good revenue. Uh, so that we can return to the stakeholders that have invested in us along the journey. Uh, and most importantly, that we have product in the market that's really making a difference. And we've come close to you know, achieving our aspiration of bringing innovative healthcare products to patients in need. So mm. that's, that's where we want to be. Yeah, that would mm. be a beautiful ending. However, I have to be practical. <laughs> like what practically needs to happen for you to achieve these goals, you think? Helena, would you like to start? Yeah, back to a little bit what I mentioned before, I think it's still continue executing on our strategy and realizing those goals and, and the initiatives that we've set forward. Yeah. What do you think, Justin? I think Helena is absolutely right. Um, there's always a balance between finance, innovation and, and go to market. Um, we know that you know the life science field is a, it's a really competitive, highly you know sort of technologically disruptive field. Um, so the, it's not without risk on, on the journey. Uh, I think we're aware of that. Um, but it's, you know, I think it's our responsibility to make sure that we have enough pipeline depth and enough product depth and enough commercial depth uh, to be able to navigate the risks around that. So I, I'm confident we, we have a great team of people. We have a great management, a good company. Uh, so if we can navigate those risks, I think we, we'll come out of this well. Thank you so much for your time, Helena and Justin. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's been Thank great you. to be here.